Europe was the first continent after North America where Seventh-day Adventists began missionary work. In 1864, the first Adventist to set foot on European soil was the unofficial missionary Michael B. Chikowsky. He first worked in the Waldensian Valleys in Northern Italy and later in Switzerland, where in 1867, he founded the first Adventist church outside North America in Tramelan. In 1874, John Nevins Andrews, the first official Adventist missionary, arrived in Switzerland to continue the work of Tchaikovsky. Today, Switzerland is part of the inter-European division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This territory includes 20 countries with almost 200,000 Adventists. There are Adventist publishing houses, schools, media centers, hospitals, and other institutions within this region. In Gland, Switzerland, an Adventist summer camp called La Plage has operated seasonally for years. This camp has been instrumental in changing the spiritual lives of Swiss young people. Arnaud came as a camper when he was a kid. The influence of this camp inspired him to live a life of service. I left Switzerland to be a volunteer in Egypt, in Nile Union Academy, and I spent the year uh, teaching English and taking care of the kids. I can say without any hesitation that last year changed my life because I came back with the wish of studying theology and I am now a student in theology that I would have never uh, thought about doing that uh, before. Arnaud acknowledges that the spiritual environment and support during his younger years at La Plage were foundational in his later decision to serve in Egypt. Because of those positive experiences as a camper, he has come back as a camp leader over the past few summers. So I think this place led me to many other activities and opportunities that led me to be a volunteer. Meeting the people that I met here and living those amazing experiences were the thing that motivated me to continue. I remember with friends we used to make jokes on the videos that we were making for like a kind of a recap every day and we were making many jokes and seeing this after many years after still brings me smile and I think the people that I met here and the the camps the activities everything motivated me a lot the camp is limited by its facilities it can only operate in the warmer months due to the piping and plumbing in the colder months the pipes freeze making the kitchen and bathroom areas unusable. Another limitation is the kitchen. This small space needs an update with an area for proper food storage, a better layout, and new appliances. With these improvements, the camp would be able to operate year-round, opening new opportunities to serve. There's one thing that I realized when I was in Egypt and when I came back is that Switzerland doesn't have many volunteers around the world. This place could become a center of formation, a center to help people find their vocation in the service, in the mission, in Switzerland or outside Switzerland. But I know that in the churches here, we have many young people that don't know really what they want to do with their life. And having a place like this with trainings, with help, with pastors here to help them would be a great chance for them to understand what they want to do with their life and I can take me as an example I never thought I would study theology before my purpose is defined this place could become a great great chance for young people and member of the church or outside of the church to understand the mission and the purpose that Christ is asking us to Follow. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will go to the renovations of La Plage. Your contribution will allow more programs to occur year-round and expand to more age groups. Please pray for this project in Switzerland. Thank you for your support of the offering that makes a difference in the lives of people like Arnaud. Stephen N. Haskell was the first Seventh-day Adventist minister to visit Portugal. Haskell traveled around the world at the service of the General Conference to scout the conditions for mission advancement. During this worldwide trip, he arrived in Portugal in July 1889. Adventist work didn't begin until September 26, 1904, 
with the arrival of the first missionary couple from the United States to Lisbon, Portugal. Clarence Emerson and Mary Haskell Renfro, along with their baby, were a young family with a passion to share the Adventist message. They began learning Portuguese, and soon after, they began selling Adventist literature, making missionary contacts and visits, and preaching. Since those humble beginnings, the Adventist church in Portugal has grown to around 10,000 members. But with 10 million people in the country, the mission challenges are still evident. It is difficult to share the gospel in the growing cities. People are busy, distracted, and interested in things outside of Christianity. One of the ways Adventists have built meaningful connections in Portugal is through education. The Setubal Adventist School opened in 1983. Lalita helped open the school and was its first teacher. She remembers how it started with only two students being taught in the church. And so it was Fernando and Georgie who first attended school here in Setubal. From there, other children came. Many children came. At the end of the first year, we had 28 children and we continued. We were allowed to keep this open and many more children came to attend the school. They quickly outgrew the small church space until eventually the building next door became available and they moved in. Parents noticed that this school had more to offer than just the standard curriculum found at other schools. Students' development of Christian values has attracted families to grow an interest in the Adventist church over the years. We look at the school as a center of influence. It's a center of influence that works with our children, but also with children who are not from our church, who even belong to other churches. And this is the great method of work of this school influencing these children and their families who come to church for special occasions. Some attend church regularly. And we have several cases of young people who have joined the Pathfinder Club and eventually were baptized. And that is why Pathfinders are exactly a complement to the church's educational project. Ultimately, they seek to educate for eternity. This church, at its base, clearly has a mission vision. And what we have seen in these 40 years of work by this school in Setuba is a very strong connection between what school life is and the life of the church. We can transmit not only the knowledge of Jesus to children, but also to parents, guardians, who often attended church, and some children who ended up becoming Adventists, along with their parents. This small school in Portugal has big potential. Unfortunately, the space isn't big enough for the school to continue to expand, and they have few resources. Staff, students, and their families pray for a new building that can accommodate this school's potential. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offerings will help construct a new school building in a fast-growing area of the city. This will allow more families to be impacted by Adventist education. I always pray for this school so that it can grow and develop. And who knows, one day we will be able to have a school with other, bigger, better facilities, with more conditions. And I think that is our objective. It's in my heart. This school is in my heart. Please pray with Lolita for this project. Thank you for supporting the 13th Sabbath offering that will impact the lives of families in Portugal.